Welcome. This is uh, Royal Oak History 101, um, or Finding Your Royal Oak History. I'm David G. Penny. Uh, if at any time you want to contact me, you can uh, send an email to David G. David Penny uh, at Comcast.net. Just be aware that uh, the last name Penny is spelled P-E-N-N-E-Y, not like the coin. Uh, for the last uh, five or six years, I've been presenting a class uh, through the school district of the City of Royal Oak, uh, the Churchill Community Education Center on Royal Oak history. Um, I, this was presented twice a year. Uh, and um, it's one night, two and a half hours, that kind of thing. Uh, I, I believe this, kind of, this presentation will continue. But what these uh, five classes that I'm gonna be talking about tonight do is will, give you, will be to give you a basis, um, kind of a, a foundation uh, for this class. And my approach is a little different than you might imagine. Instead of talking about Royal Oak history directly, which could take hours, maybe days, um, certainly more than one sitting, uh, I have done it in a fashion where I talk about the sources of information on Royal Oak history, and in the process, of course, impart some interesting facts and stories and things about history, but allow you then to study on your own, to find the information in books and pamphlets and um, other sources. Um, so that, that is my approach. Um, if you take a look uh, on the internet, <clears throat> for example, in Wikipedia, for just some basic information about Royal Oak, uh, which I've done, uh, and you can see it here. Uh, it shows that Royal Oak is in Oakland County, and Oakland County is in the southeastern corner of uh, Michigan. <clears throat> the population of Royal, the elevation of Royal Oak is about 663 feet. <clears throat> the population in 2000 was uh, was uh, 60,062. The area of the city is only 11.8 square miles, and the mayor currently is uh, Mr. Jim Ellison. Um, uh, Royal Oak initially was uh, incorporated as a village in 1891, uh, and as a city in 1921, and we'll touch on this as we go along. Uh, the city name uh, originates from 1819, uh, when territorial governor Lewis Cass uh, came to the Royal Oak area on an expedition surveying the land. And there was a tree located near the present day uh, intersection of Crooks Road, Rochester, and Main Streets uh, that reminded um, Territorial Governor Cass of the Royal Oak uh, in England, uh, within which King Charles II of England hid to escape the Roundheads following the Battle of uh, Worcester. Um, another event that they mention on Wikipedia is an event that is probably not something we'd like to remember uh, that occurred on November 14, 1991, having to do with the, uh, the killings that occurred uh, at the post office. Um, and from that, uh, the phrase, uh, going postal, has, has developed. Um, I would wa want to, I think, point out here that uh, there are books available on Royal Oak that have been published recently. Uh, this is one of them. It's called Royal Oak Twigs and Acorns Plus, and it was published uh, in 2008. It's a, a book by myself and Lois Lance. And I would point out that this book and uh, four, uh, three other books, four books in all presently, that are for sale. It includes this book, My Royal Oak Images from the 20th Century. So all proceeds from these books then go to the museum to support it and so on. And I'll remind you along the way. And these books are available at Frances Hardware and at the museum. Now where are we going uh, in this first class? Well what I'm going to do I think first of all is talk about learning objectives. Um, and having to do with Royal Oak History, at least at this level, the Royal Oak History 101 uh, level. Um, we'll talk about Penny ancestors. I want to kind of lay out um, my ancestors. I think the reason being that um, you'll realize that my family's been here a long time and I, I therefore hopefully have some credibility in talking about Royal Oak History. Um, we'll talk about maps as being important to understanding uh, the history, they certainly are to me, 
when I do history research, uh, Oakland, the, the Oakland County um, um, hi, uh, history book uh, published in 1877. Uh, I'll show you that and some of the, uh, uh, the prints out of it. And we'll talk a little bit about the Fay history of Royal Oak, which is an unpublished manuscript that's available in the library and now elsewhere. <coughs> Well, the learning objectives are actually, there's 23 that I've listed here. Um, what is the elevation of Royal Oak? Well, I think I already mentioned that, 663 feet above sea level. Um, and we're at some height above uh, the Detroit River, I think approximately 65 feet. Um, what Indian Trail passed through Royal Oak? Is there a remnant today? Well, there is, of uh, the Saginaw Trail or Saginaw Indian Trail. Uh, and the remnant we can see at the Almond Star House up on Crooks Road. List three streets in Royal Oak with Native American names. Well, I, I can think of a, a couple, I hope I can, Potawatomi, Mohawk, uh, Etowah, Awana, and there, there are many others. Uh, how many state historic markers are there in Royal Oak? That is, markers that were placed there by uh, folks in Royal Oak, but they're standard markers issued by the state um, there actually are six, and if you go to my website, uh, which I'll talk about presently, you can see them there, or you can just go out and scout around. There's one at the Orson Star House, one at the Almond Star House, one at the Women's Club, one at the First Methodist Church, and one at the Baptist Church. Um, and um, there's also, of course, a double-sided one at the cemetery. Um, where is the site of the Royal Oak? Well, that's what we, uh, we call, the location is what we call the triangle, the site at which um, Main Street uh, separates from Rochester Road and, and, and Crooks Road. Three roads go off at that point. Uh, what stream or creek flowed through Royal Oak? Red Run, and uh, we'll touch on that as we go along. And Run, of course, means creek, so we don't say Red Run Creek, we say just Red Run. When was the first land entry made in uh, Royal Oak Township? Um, well, as far as we know, about 1816, uh, so very, very early, <clears throat> well before many people came to the area. What was the trade of the first man who established, who established a light industry in Royal Oak? Well, this was making animal bells, and uh, actually I have an animal bell here, and we'll look at it at, uh, later. Uh, this was Orson Starr up on Main Street near 13 Mile, uh, where he had his bell factory. Uh, and what was the name of the school at 13 Mile Road and Rochester Road in 1900? Um, and what's located there now? Well, it was called the Williams School because David Williams gave uh, the land to the, uh, the district uh, to build a school, later called the Oak Ridge School, and uh, there's now a McDonald's restaurant there. What year did Royal Oak become a village? I think I already mentioned that in the Wikipedia listing, uh, 1891. And what year did Royal Oak become a city? And that was also mentioned, 1921. And the first mayor, of course, was George A. Dondero. Who owned the land that Royal Oak Dondero High School stands on today? Well, my great-grandfather owned it. Um, before that, I believe my great-great-grandfather owned the land. Um, You'll see those presently, William H. Knowles and my great-grandfather, Frank Lincoln Knowles. Who owned the land that, um, uh, what was the southern uh, boundary of the village of Royal Oak? Well, uh, 8th Street uh, was, which we call Lincoln. Um, the eastern boundary was uh, Troy. Uh, the western boundary was uh, West Street, strangely enough. Western boundary, West Street. And the northern boundary was First Street, which of course we usually refer to as 11 Mile Road. And who is responsible for developing the Northwood subdivision? And we'll talk about that in, I think, the fifth class. Um, that's uh, the, the Clausen family, Furman Clausen and his son, F. Lloyd Clausen. Uh, where was the first hospital in Royal Oak? Um, it was the Royal Oak General Hospital, and it had another name as well, which has been written about recently in the newspaper, um, in uh, the Washington, what was the Washington Square building on the corner of uh, 4th and Washington. Uh, what natural disaster happened in Royal Oak in 1893? Well, there was a cyclone here. We today call them tornadoes, and it, um, it nearly destroyed my great-grandfather's house. Um, what, what is the oldest cemetery in Royal Oak? Well, naturally enough, Royal Oak Cemetery, uh, in, uh, just north of the triangle that I spoke of. Uh, what is the oldest organized church in Royal Oak? Um, well, 
the first United Methodist Church, actually the, it was called the Methodist Episcopal Church at that time, and that was 1837. Um, what determined exactly where downtown Royal Oak is uh, located now? Uh, well, it, what determined it really was the railroad coming through. Uh, and originally, there was a, a small development, um, if we could call it that, up near 13 Mile and Crooks Road. And the town might have developed there as a center instead of near 4th and Main, but the railroad changed that. What was the Royal Oak Public Library? Was the Royal Oak Public Library ever housed in an old bank building? Yeah, it was. It was housed in the bank building that is uh, now, I think, um, some kind of a coffee shop, um, maybe Starbucks, actually, on the corner of 3rd and Main Street. Uh, it was known as, well, for a long time, as the Jacob Levy Bank. Uh, what internationally known example of Art Deco architecture is located in Royal Oak? Well, the Shrine of the Little Flower uh, at the corner of 12 Mile and Woodward is certainly uh, internationally known in that way for art and for architecture. Um, probably the best known example um, in, uh, in Royal Oak. How many veterans are buried in, uh, or memorialized in Royal Oak Cemetery? Well, my wife just counted up the numbers from a booklet that we produced on the cemeteries, and uh, it's actually 91. Um, and we'll talk about that booklet later on. It's also for sale and helps support the museum. Um, where can you find information on Royal Oak history? Well, that really is what this talk is all about, is where you find the information, and I'm kind of going to march through the different sources, the books and the pamphlets and the manuscripts as we, we go along uh, from class one through uh, class five. Um, you might notice the uh, website at the bottom of this page. Um, it's uh, the website called um, Historic Royal Oak and it has a huge number of images of Royal Oak, old Royal Oak, um, and some almost current Royal Oak on it. Uh, and it's completely free of charge. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about my uh, Royal Oak heritage. Um, the picture you're seeing is of me some years ago. <laughs> um, um, but I have been active in Royal Oak history uh, for uh, uh, about uh, 33 years now, uh, although I was uh, born in Royal Oak uh, and uh, grew up here. Um, uh, this is a uh, picture showing my two great-great-grandparents, um, Amelia Ashton Knowles uh, and William H. Knowles. Uh, my William H. Knowles, my great-great-grandfather, um, came to Royal Oak initially, as far as we know, in 1854. He wasn't one of the earliest ones. The earliest land entry, as I said, was 1816. And, and then people came in the 1820s and 30s and 40s. Um, but there were very few people in Royal Oak Township at that time. We're probably in the whole township, which is much more than what is present-day Royal Oak City. Uh, we're probably no more than 100 people uh, at that time. Um, he came and he bought land. Uh, and uh, then eventually he came with his family, his third wife, Amelia Ashton. His first two wives died. He had something like 15 children altogether by three wives. Uh, he was pretty elderly when he came to Royal Oak, settled down in a house on 8th Street or Lincoln. <clears throat> that house is still there. Uh, in fact, this is the house uh, that you can see. Um, it doesn't look quite like this n any longer, and it may not even have looked exactly like this at the time. This is not a photograph. This is a uh, some kind of a drawing, a print. Um, and this was found, is found, in the 1877 History of Oakland County, uh, which is a big book, uh, which I, I have with me, and we'll look at it a little later, a very large book. And you could pay to have your a picture or a print of your house and your grounds um, and a bio about you in the book. Um, so the history wasn't maybe as kind of unbiased and um, even as we might imagine. It was really a subscription kind of uh, a book, history book, a little different than we might think of today. Uh, but it's an incredibly valuable resource on the history of that period. 
Um, this is uh, his, old, his uh, oldest son from the third marriage, uh, born in 1860, Frank Lincoln Knowles, my great-grandfather and his wife, Eliza A. Watts Knowles. And she came from um, Greenfield Township, which is just across Eight Mile Road, south of Eight Mile Road, uh, from um, Royal Oak Township, um, where the state fairgrounds is today. Um, and they were married, uh, I believe, in 1882. I have their copy of their wedding um, invitation. Um, and they went out to live on a house on um, North Main Street, which is in front of, immediately across the street from what is now the Hollywood Market. Um, uh, I usually, in my classes, refer to Great Grandpa Knowles as uh, the handsome dog because I, he's a pretty good-looking fellow there. Uh, and um, he went on to um, be president of the village of Royal Oak for a number of years. He was very prominent um, in a number of civic activities. This is my uh, great-grandfather, Penny, who came to the United States um, in, I believe, 1870 from, the, uh, from England. Um, with a trade as a shipwright, or certainly a carpenter, looking for opportunities here, and he eventually settled in Royal Oak around 1900. Uh, so that's my great-grandfather Penny, William Henry Penny. Um, then my, my grandfather was George Washington Penny. He was born in Royal Oak, and he lived in Royal Oak all his life. Um, he was also a carpenter. Uh, and I knew him well. I didn't know my great-grandfather. He died uh, 16 years before I was born, but I certainly knew my grandfather. And then my, my dad, uh, George Donald Penny, or Pop as we called him, uh, was a fireman in Royal Oak, and uh, he loved being a fireman. Uh, he rose to captain and was captain for uh, 17 years uh, in Royal, Royal Oak. This is actually this picture on the, the, the left here is actually him coming down the pole at the uh, Northwood uh, uh, or the, uh, um, the Northwood Station, number two station, where the um, historical museum is being built. Picture on the right here is him on the roof at the top, and they're carrying one of the firefighters down the ladder who's been um, breathing smoke. And then you notice they didn't have any breathing gear on, any. Uh, self-contained breathing apparatus at that time. This was, of course, that's required today. Uh, this is where I grew up on Lincoln Avenue uh, at the corner of Vermont, 1321 East Lincoln. In fact, I'm in the picture there, uh, just a little tyke, uh, about two and a half years old, next to the uh, 1940 Ford. Um, nice house, uh, residential neighborhood, and uh, uh, I had lots and lots of relatives in town, including my grandfather and uncles and great uncles and heard stories about Royal Oak, and that's, I think, where my love for uh, local history, especially Royal Oak local history, came from. Um, and this is me uh, and when I was 15 in my chemistry lab uh, in the basement, and uh, I was uh, crazy about chemistry and astronomy and electronics and a lot of other things. Now, uh, I want to talk a bit about maps. Maps are very important uh, to the study of history, in my opinion, because you need to kind of geographically locate whatever you're talking about, when, where the event took place, where the person lived, what they were doing. Um, the earliest map that's really usable uh, in Royal Oak history is a Royal Oak Township map that uh, comes down to us from 1857. Now, there was a, a earlier map, the Wampler map, that's published in the Perkins book, but it, it doesn't have sufficient detail to really be useful. Uh, this map can be found in Troy at the historical uh, park there on the wall in an old school building. Uh, and it's, it's a very large, um, it covers all of actually Oakland County, but this is just for Royal Oak Township, which is one small fraction of all of, of uh, Oakland County. Um, and it shows uh, the, uh, where Woodward is, it shows where the railroad ran, um, it shows the, the triangle uh, with separation of Crooks Road, Main Street, and Rochester. It shows the early platted uh, Royal Oak uh, um, hamlet, 
long before the, the village existed in 1891. Um, so it shows a considerable amount of detail for that time. In fact, you, here you can see a, a, a detail of that section. Uh, again, the platted section that would be, uh, would involve West Street, uh, Troy, First Street or 11 Mile, and the southern boundary, uh, Lincoln Avenue, Eighth Street. Um, and it shows some of the names that were important at that time. Fleming Drake uh, shows Knowles, which would be my, actually my great-great-grandfather, William H. Knowles. And it shows the number of acres each one owned. My great-great-grandfather here, I believe, uh, owned 54 acres at that location. Um, so maps are, are really very useful. Now the next map that uh, we have um, is one from 1872 or 1873. The date sometimes varies. It's somewhere along those lines. I've got it listed here as 1873, um, and it's found in an atlas. It's actually quite a large, large book of maps. Uh, they're quite rare today. It's quite expensive. Um, and here you can see it's in color, um, different shades of red and green and yellow and so on. Um, and it shows essentially the same thing, but further development um, of, the, of the area. More people have come in. Uh, again, you can see the railroad. You can see where Woodward Avenue is. Um, you, you can see the triangle area. And in fact, one thing that stands out real clearly is Red Run is the, the local creek uh, the north branch, the south branch, and so on of it. Um, now here's a detail map of the center here. Um, would be right downtown. Um, and remember, this is still before the village was formed in 1891, since this is from 1873. You can see some of the names again. Watch, uh, Oliver Watch had 40 acres over on the, um, the southeast corner of this, um, this view. Uh, w. Dunham had 200 acres. That's where the present Oakview Cemetery is located. Uh, I'm just naming some here at, at kind of at, at random. Um, but it's very interesting that you can see the names and the amount of land that each person owned from these maps. Um, let's go on. Uh, this is a little wider view, again from 1873. Uh, you can also see the school districts, school district number seven over on the west, um, school district, I'm not sure what the number is, over on the east here, I've cut off the number, um, but there were a number of school districts within uh, Royal Oak Township, and they would be one-room schools, and the children from that area would go to that school or go to another school. Um, this is a detail of the platted area um, between, as I said, West Street, Troy, and First Street and, and, uh, and Eighth Street or Lincoln. And it shows the railroad going through there, Detroit and Milwaukee Railroad. Uh, this was well before the Grand Trunk uh, Railroad was established and, and ran through town uh, over the same track. Um, this map actually from 1873, or I should say the map book, uh, the atlas is signed by George A. Dondero, says Royal Oak, Michigan. Um, and uh, he was, uh, I, I believe, the one who gave the map book, the atlas, to the library. And I uh, scanned um, and photographed the uh, maps at the Royal Oak Public Library. Now, here's a later um, map from 1908 of Royal Oak Township. And again, you can see more detail. It's a little different color. Um, and it's certainly worthy of study. Uh, there are several maps uh, around this period after the turn of the century that are available. And you can see the section numbers on each of these maps. Uh, the section numbers, uh, uh, two, three, four, five going uh, actually right to left, and then eight, nine, 10, 11 going left to right, and so on. Um, so you'd want to know what section number you're in. Of course, if you bought land, it would be determined by the section number and what, how many acres and what part of the section, where the northeast section, northwest section, whatever it might be. Uh, and this is a downtown area in this 1908 map. Uh, I can see Frank Knoll's land just north of the boundaries of what was the village, since now it was village from 1891 until 1921. 
and uh, Frank Knowles had this long strip of land which was about 40 acres uh, that ran east-west and the west end of it would be of course where the present day uh, um, Royal Oak High School, then George H. and Darrell High School, and now Middle School, uh, is located. Um, the Oakland County um, history book is a very large one. Um, this is in one is in excellent condition. It was loaned to me by uh, Mrs. Lois Lance, uh, one of my good friends. I have a copy of it as well, in similar condition, but I don't have it. In, in Royal Oak right now. So I'm showing you uh, the book, um, and you can see it on the slide here as well, but you get a feel for the fact that it was a, really a very large book. It's not a book that you kind of carry everywhere. Um, it says 1817, um, and then it says History of Oakland County, Michigan with illustrations 1877. So it's covering this period, 1877, 1817 to 1877. Um, uh, here's the same uh, print again of my great-great-grandfather's house on Lincoln Avenue or 8th Street. We looked at that earlier. Um, um, this is a print of the John Benjamin House, which is located or was located on Woodward Avenue on the east side, just opposite uh, Roseland Park Cemetery. Um, Actually, Mr. Benjamin owned land uh, on the east side where his house is, ex extensive amount of land, and also he owned the land where Roseland Park Cemetery is today, on the west side of, of Woodward Avenue, just, uh, just north of 12 Mile. Um, and John Benjamin was uh, a very well-known citizen. Um, he was very active civically. He was the inventor of the Benjamin Grain Cradle. Uh, a number of things were uh, very important. Uh, the, uh, that uh, Benjamin was involved with. This is the A.B. Parker House. Um, it was located on the, um, near the southwest corner of Woodward Avenue and 13 Mile Road, where the Northwood uh, Shopping Center is today. And again, we can't be sure that the house looked just like this. This, again, is a print. It's not a photograph. Uh, but certainly beautiful. Uh, here's the Virgil M. Rose House, and this was located uh, on Woodward Avenue. What we see is uh, we see a carriage going by and what is now Woodward Avenue going, I guess, going south. And then over to the, um, <clears throat> to the right side, we see another road going off, and I believe this uh, was Main Street, what we call Main Street today, uh, or Livernoy. So he lived right there at the, at the intersection uh, of those two roads. And he owned land in other places. Uh, now, um, this is a point where I'd like to look at the website um, called Historic Royal Oak. This is uh, Historic Royal Oak. Uh, it is a website that uh, runs on a server in Texas. Uh, I generated it myself some years ago, and I, uh, it's not completely up to date, but in a, in a website that deals with local history being not completely up to date, I don't think is a terrible sin uh, because we're really talking about old things <laughs> to begin with, some going back um, 100 years or more. Um, uh, it, it's uh, available in Penny Library. You go to um, www.coheadquarters.com slash penliber P-E-N-N-L-I-B-R slash historic R-O slash intro dot H-T-M. I think you'll see this elsewhere. I know that's a real mouthful, um, kind of a long address. Um, but what you would see when you get into Historic Royal Oak is you see a main page uh, which shows a, a number of, of topics. For example, brief history of Royal Oak and area, a chronology of Royal Oak, I'll go to chronology quickly here, and you can see um, the um, establishment of Royal Oak uh, Township Cemetery in 1826 is listed here. We'll talk a bit about the cemetery, about the Methodist Church being founded, about a Baptist Church being founded, about the Orson Star House, and so on. Uh, there's a picture of a uh, star bell here as we go through. So it's a standard chronology of major events. Uh, there are maps of Royal Oak, which some of which we've looked at already. Um, there's um, biographical sketches, which are quite useful. 
um, sketches, for example, of Sherman Williams and his family, of my great-grandfather, Frank Knowles, um, and, and others, of George A. Dondero, the first mayor and representative to Congress. Uh, there's really probably more here than you're going to want to look at in one sitting. There are hundreds of old images um, of Royal Oak. So um, this is available, of course, uh, free of charge. Um, you can do what you want with the images. If you want to download them and use them for something else, that's, of course, uh, your choice there. Uh, all the images, as far as I know, are in the public domain. So uh, they're not owned by anyone, certainly not owned by me. Um, there are also uh, is a section on Royal Oak Cemetery and St. Mary Cemetery and a listing of the surnames of folks who are um, found in the cemetery. Uh, if you want a more, um, specific, more specific information about uh, the people who are interred in the cemeteries, in other words, you want to find out for sure if somebody th is there, you want to find out when they died, uh, maybe what they died from, exactly what uh, plot, plot they're in, um, what grave number, you could come to me and by email or otherwise, and I can look this up in a computer database, which we'll talk about later in the class. Um, so let us go back now to uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the other material. Um, The next item I'd like to mention is, is really a, 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 a source uh, for in, uh, information about Royal Oak that was never published. It's not a book. It's what we call a, a manuscript. It's the Charles Fay Manuscript, and it's maintained in the library. <coughs> um, the title is The City of Royal Oak, Michigan, 1817 to 1954 by Charles Fay. Fay is F-E-Y. Uh, and it was it was uh, finished um, in 1954. Um, now, y y you could go to the library and get a copy, of course. I, you may, I don't think they'll let you take it out, but you could make photocopies of parts of it, I suppose. That's up to the library. I, I have a copy uh, that I've had for a long time. The Historical Museum has a copy. And now we've scanned the entire manuscript into PDF. So it's available to anyone who wants a copy uh, of it. Um, and Mr. Fay was a resident of Royal Oak and of, and of Lathrop, and he died uh, in 1971. Uh, he was born in Detroit in 1884. He, he was married, and he, he had a regular kind of job, which I won't go into here. Um, so this interest in history was, was really kind of a a hobby, like it is for a lot of us, including myself. Um, he was also the author of The History of Masonry in Michigan, a member of a local Royal Oak uh, Lodge, uh, 464 F and AM, the Moslem Shrine, and was, was a 33-degree Mason. Um, I didn't know Mr. Fay. Um, I was really just getting started in kind of my, with my interest in, in Royal Oak um, when he passed away. Uh, but he's left this marvelous manuscript uh, that we can look at. Um, the book by Owen Perkins called Royal Oak, the Early Years, drew upon this manuscript in many ways. Um, for example, there's a listing of the Royal Oak Village officers, uh, presidents and clerks, and I'm not going to list all of them, but it, I, it's of interest to me that my great-grandfather, Frank Lincoln Knowles, is mentioned as president of the village of Royal Oak. That's before there was a city, of course, um, from 1897 to 98 and from 1901 to 1904. And other prominent names that you might hear about, Merritt and Kidder and Mao and Hoffman and Peters and so on, were also presidents for short periods of time. Um, this uh, is a, this kind of slide here shows uh, a CD, which I spoke about earlier, that you can obtain from the museum or from me, that has uh, a PDF, PDF copy of the manuscript on. So if you want to look at it, you can do that, or you could print it out from this or whatever you want. 
So um, this will be done with a number of other kind of rare uh, sources on Royal Oak, um, which will, we will scan and make available uh, for people uh, to, to use for their historical purposes through the museum. Uh, I think this is going to conclude the first class on uh, uh, Royal Oak History 101. I thank you for um, tuning in and, and watching and, and watch for the, the next class, uh, class number two. Thank you very much.